ourselves how we do this. When we speak of other persons, either they hear them or we try to discuss within a group about a particular person or about a particular group. We try to give a lower estimate of that person or of the same group. By doing so, what we are doing is we are trying to push ourselves up the ladder. Imagine ourselves standing up and trying to lower somebody. And when we do that, we always say, as I told you, like I want, if, I, if I have to give an example, we always start the statement by saying, oh, okay, now top me if I'm wrong, but I want to say this. Uh, I don't want to be so critical, but still I want to say this. Probably I don't want to say anything, but still I have to say this. So these are the kind of uh, opening statements we put up when we want to judge other people or as a group. James is also bringing up another habit of judging believers. Judging people within a church community. But again, we have to be careful about proper judging and improper judging. We need to see like what is this proper and what is that improper. A gracious and wonderful God. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time you have given us. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for your presence in our midst, Lord. Be with us. Lead us in the way that we need to walk. Give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, and the humbleness that we need. We'll be always be walking with you, Lord. Be with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We will continue to study the book of James. Um, we have been looking into the overall big picture, what James is trying to emphasize here. Real faith produces genuine works under which we were studying. Real faith produces genuine stability and real faith produces genuine love and off late we have been studying real faith produces genuine humility. The cardinal virtue of the Christian faith with his powerful words and he gives more emphasis here. We have already seen in the previous study how he was contrasting those who are wise in their own eyes and those who have humble wisdom from God. That's what we saw in the third chapter from verses 13 to 18. And in the last study, we looked at the causes of quarrels and conflicts, the envious ambitions. But these are cured when we submit ourselves to God's true humility. That's what we saw last time in the fourth chapter from verses 1 to 10. Today we will be looking into the fourth chapter from verses 11 to 17. James chapter 4 verses 11 to 17. Do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. 
there is only one lawgiver and judge the one who is able to save and destroy but you who are you to judge your neighbor now listen you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city spend the year there carry on business and make money why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say if it is the lord's will we will live and do this or that as it is you boast in your arrogant schemes all such boasting is evil if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it it is sin for them amen without any doubt without any question we all know that jesus christ best demonstrated true humility he voluntarily gave up his heavenly position and came into this world he lived a perfect obedient life to god and to the law and willingly sacrificed his life on the cross for all of our sins this is a summary of what we read in philippians chapter 2 six to eight this perfect humility of god the son becomes a model for us to follow if you look into the previous verse paul says have this attitude in yourselves which was also in christ if you look back a little bit before that that is verses 3 to 4 he is actually warning the philippians paul is warning the philippians for this same reason for their egocentric arrogance the same theme here is used by james before we go into learning more about this we will try to look into the verses in philippians what paul is saying so we will have a clear understanding what james is writing to us if you turn to philippians chapter 2 i will start reading from verses 3 to 4 philippians verses uh, chapter 2 3 and 4 do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interests of the others now watch carefully the fifth verse paul is saying in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as jesus christ this is this is the theme uh, james is now developing he goes uh, a further step in giving how we are so arrogant in ourselves or arrogant spirit in ourselves so we we'll split this lesson into two parts it will be easy for us for understanding so we read in james chapter 4 verses 11 to 17 so james is emphasizing two things here the first as i mentioned our arrogant spirit right the first arrogant spirit here is the first has to do with the way we often look into others how 
we look into others. That is what we see in verses 11 and 12. And the second aspect, what he is mentioning here is the way we often look into ourselves. That is verses 13 to 16. And the final verse, he gives what we have to do and what we should not do, which is a sin. So we will go into the first one. How we view others. How we view others. The objective of playing God in the lives of others is to imagine ourselves superior to other Christians and put the other people down. That's the, that's the emphasis of these two word, verses. The objective of playing God in the lives of other people. And thereby doing it, we put other people's life below par. The one who takes God's role becomes so qualified as a critic. That's what happens. And we claim to be as superior to the other people, which shouldn't happen. We look into the Bible, when you look into the Bible, you have so many examples where people are judging other persons or other people. If you start from the beginning, from Genesis onwards, you will see Aaron and Miriam. They speak against Moses for one reason, because he's married to a Kushite woman. And then we see how the Israelites, when they were wandering in the desert, they were speaking against God. And if you recollect, for the past weeks, Professor Jack Mar was teaching about Job, right? If you recollect how Job's friends, they were speaking against Job. And in the New Testament, we see a lot of unbelievers who speak against Christians. What James is suggesting is Christians who speak against their brothers and sisters in Christ include themselves in that biblical register by groaning and grumbling and they become slanderers. If I have to give you an example for this, imagine ourselves how we do this. When we speak of other persons, either they hear them or we try to discuss within a group about a particular person or about a particular group. We try to give a lower estimate of that person or of the same group. By doing so, what we are doing is we are trying to push ourselves up the ladder. Imagine ourselves standing up and trying to lower somebody. And when we do that, we always say, as I told you, like I want, if I, if I have to give an example, we always start the statement by saying, oh, okay, now top me if I'm wrong, but I want to say this. Uh, I don't want to be so critical, but still I want to say this. Probably I don't want to say anything, but still I have to say this. So these are the kind of 
uh, opening statements we put up when we want to judge other people or as a group james is also bringing up another habit of judging believers judging people within a church community but again we have to be careful about proper judging and improper judging we need to see like what is this proper and what is that improper if you if you look into matthew jesus says do not judge so that you will not be judged and again in in if you look into romans uh, chapter 2 verse 1 paul is writing you have no excuse every one of you who passes judgment for in what which you judge another you condemn yourself so you have to be very careful uh, what we are doing if you if you again look into uh, the verses of jesus in matthew 7 he says how can you say to your brother let me take the speck out of your eye and behold the log is in your own eye i can i can go on um, giving more um, examples uh, quoting verses but you think like you can take this down um read um try to read romans um chapter 2 verse 3 it also gives us more about the judgment but again we have to be also careful as i told you about the proper judging um if you look into john 7:24 jesus says do not judge according to appearance but judge with righteous judgment that's what i was telling about the proper judging we have to stand up for righteous judgment if something goes wrong i think legally officially then that is the time you stand up and pinpoint the mistake by doing the right judgment james is very clear about that he is not suggesting us to be very foolish standing in front of something when something wrong is happening you keep your mouth shut so that's that's the point he wants to emphasize he he is confronting the fellow christians about their sins so you have to stand up for the purpose of building up and the condemnation for the purpose of tearing down <clears throat> James James that's what James is saying if you tear down and judge your fellow christian we break the law that's what he is mentioning about in these verses but you have to have the question in you what law is James referring to that law is not the law of moses or it is not the law that are being created by the Israelites James is going back into these verses what we read in James 125 and in 28 the perfect law the law of liberty which is love your neighbor as yourself in fact actually James is revisiting the theme what he mentioned earlier of standing in judgment over others he says the same thing we we saw that previously when we were looking into james uh, chapter 2 from verses 4 to 13 when we were discussing about the problems of partiality or prejudice if you do remember that so judgmental um, attitude is revealed in the way how you sort it out <clears throat> so the real problem with judging others is we are 
playing the role of God. James is reminding us that there is only one lawgiver and judge, that he is the supreme sovereign Lord. Only God can pass judgment on a person's action and motives without fault, without any bias, without any hypocrisy. <clears throat> if you look into um, the verses on James 4.12, he gives a final action over there by pinpointing us if you look into the verses, it says, you there, who are you to judge your neighbor? So that's, that's a close call for every one of us. We are not God to judge anybody. Going back to the second <clears throat> virtue, what he is mentioning here, we often judge ourselves. That is from verse 13 to 16. The problem of playing God in the life of others, what we saw, and now we will see how we are playing God or over our own lives. So the objective of this one is <clears throat> we have the final authority of our own lives. That's what most of us do. Most of us, even though we are saved believers, we put God in a particular compartment. How I say that is, we assign God as a sovereign person who would take care of certain things like religious issues, moral issues, question about faith. Those are the things we think like God have to handle. But when it comes to our finance, our relationship, our attitudes, we put God away from that. We always feel God shouldn't rule those things of whatever I mentioned in our lives. That's why I said like we try to compartmentalize God in our day-to-day -day activities. The idea is we master our own destiny. That's what we see here when we look into verse 13. We will read the verse 13 again uh, so we can correctly understand why James is writing this verse to say that we are playing like God. Look at the verse again. We will split this and we can understand that. It says, today or tomorrow, we will go to such a such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Okay. Where does this playing of God comes in this verse? Be careful when I say this. Okay. Today and tomorrow, by saying that, we set our own schedule for that, today and tomorrow. In the next part, we will go to such a such a city. By doing so, we select our own path and spend a year there. So we place our own limits and engage in a business. So we arrange our own activities. And finally, and make a profit. We predict our own outcome. See, you have to you have to be very careful. None of these activities, James describing, is negative for itself. There is nothing wrong 
planning ahead or nothing evil when we try to schedule something or nothing bad when we are engaging in a business or nothing sinful when we are making a profit so you have to be very very careful about it so what is james mentioning here is god who's the sovereign person we must consider his will the supreme god he is the person who's who has allowed us to do all these things so we have to consider his will in every aspect of our life in every aspect of our life see james is actually pointing out the problems when we go all alone in all these things if you look into verse 14 there are three aspects what james is mentioning here we will re- we will read the verse again so we will understand it properly he he is posting questions here in 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 verse 14 how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow your life is like the morning fog it's here a little while then it's gone the first problem what he is pointing james is pointing here is we are mere mortal humans and we have no idea what the future will bring we are just mortals and we have no idea what the future will bring we do not even know what will happen the next moment if you look around ourselves and if you look around the happenings you will know that we don't have any control of all these things we don't even have control over ourselves so we have to be very careful and we have to be very sure and acknowledge that we are mortals we may live longer we may live shorter we do not know what would happen the next moment and the second thing is playing god with our own lives is risky playing lives sorry playing god with our own lives is risky because we have no assurance of a long life what james is saying our lives are as a vapor that appears suddenly and dissipates quickly our life is like a vapor this is the good time of the year when the temperature is cold when we go out when you breathe out your warm air you will see the small vapor white white vapor that appears right the very moment you see and the very next moment it disappears right james is mentioning exactly that we do not know the moment that vapor disappears or vanishes it happens quickly it happens very fast so we have to be very very aware that our lives is risky because we have no assurance of a long life on the third one he says we have no right to ignore god's will in any aspect of our lives we have no right to ignore god's will in any aspect of our lives see he mentions in verse 15 how we have to correct what we read in 430 right in 415 he gives the correct way instead you ought to say if if the lord wills we will live and also do this or that for many of our believers these two words god willing 
has become nothing but a cliche when we say that we have to believe it and we have to do it when we say the lord wills it reflects our attitude and orientation towards our life if we say if the lord wills it reflects an attitude of us and the orientation of our life it means simply submitting ourselves humbly before our god who's entitled to be the lord of our lives of all things we don't want to compartmentalize god in certain areas he is the sovereign ruler who made this heaven and earth and he rules over everything not a few things we have to always be in caution we cannot compartmentalize god for certain things we cannot just use him for certain things and then keep him away everything all things that happen in our life is governed by him we need to seek his will in everything he owns all these things that's the reason james is saying that we have to submit all things to the lord and if we don't do it that's what he calls it as arrogance and finally the 17th verse he concludes it by pointing two ways of stopping playing god in our lives that's that's one good aspect always when you look into the previous verses and chapters whatever james has been teaching us he always points the mistake we do and as a doctor he also prescribes good things so finally here in verse 17 he prescribes this <clears throat> both of these two ways of playing god both relate to our true humility that flows from our authentic faith first he says is know the right thing to do know the right thing to do and then second he says start doing the right thing so if you know the right thing try to do the right thing again first you have to identify that and start doing that god has a standard of right living and that transcends in our interests and in our pursuits god wants to guide us in the right path he has set for us to make that happen what are we supposed to do we are supposed to stay closer to his words shaping our path according to his wisdom but when we do this that doesn't solve the solution it just gives a half the solution when we know what god's god is wanting from us we have to do it if we continue to live as though god isn't interested in certain areas of our life that's what it is called a sin when we submit when we obey him that path of life is totally different when we don't obey him and again partial obedience is again disobedience i will end up by saying these you you can contemplate on this there are three ways how we can submit ourselves 
our will and our way or you can put that as my will and my way if we say that it will end up in disaster and the second one is my will and god's way or our will and god's way this will also lead to disaster when we have our own will and then we ask for certain direction from god that is not going to happen but what is the answer it is his will and his way god's will and god's way what does it take to do this our faith his will his way and our faith i always have this uh, verse my famous one of my uh, favorite verses from mica uh, 68 which says like we are all martyrs and we have been taught what to do have to act justly love mercy and walk humbly with the god humility is one of the most important lessons what jesus christ has taught us to do but most of the time we fail to recognize that and follow do not follow that so we need to follow his example for what he taught and what he did when he was here thank you lord for this wonderful lesson of humility we always delight in you lord help us to commit our ways help us to always trust in you lord help us always to rest in you you have taught us humbleness through your son who lived a life so obedient to you lord he accepted the cross for the sins what we did our sins were so crimson he wiped it as white as snow lord thank you for accepting us into your heavenly kingdom you knew us even before we were born lord you formed us you created us there is always a plan and a purpose you mend us you mold us the way that you want us to be lord like your son christ preparing always to be heaven bound may your good spirit lead us on level grounds lord help us always to teach what to do and to do your will help us always to remember those lord seek you seek your guidance and completely trust in you strip us of everything and let us have an open hand before you lord let us not hold anything help us to surrender completely let us not hold any grudges any false feelings gossips enmity if we do have that lord st- 
enter us that out of our places. Let us always follow the rules, the commandments you have given us to love every other person as they are, as you have accepted as what we are, Lord. Let us not judge anybody. Let us always be humble. Express our love and compassion. So we will always express your love. And people will be always looking at us as witnesses, Lord. Thank you for being with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.